this is a uh, my second guest, and I'm very excited to have this person. He is an NFL All-Pro football player, winner of three Super Bowls, and a really awesome cigar connoisseur, wine connoisseur, family man, and poker player. And now I almost want to say we can call you like a professional poker player, right? Yeah, right. All right. <laughs> Can't do the, don't, throw, <laughs> don't throw that label on me. Oh, <laughs> you can say I'm a professional wine drinker, but <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, if anyone's gonna have the title professional wine drinker, it'll be me, and then you can yeah. have the title okay, of professional I, poker I, player. I'll take co- yeah, I'll be a co-pilot. I'll okay, a co-pilot. so ladies and gentlemen, Richard Seymour. Thank yeah, you. insert round of applause. Absolutely, thank you for having me. Oh my goodness, thank you. This is such a pleasure of mine, and especially. For me, in this in this new way that I want to do interviews, because I feel like a lot of poker interviews, there's so much poker, mm-hmm. and I feel like with you, there's a lot of. I mean, what's Not poker? Yeah, <laughs> because well, because obviously your background, like you were at the highest level that you can possibly go in your field and your career, and then to go from that to poker, what I mean, why yeah. poker? Well, you know, it's such a competitive game, um, and I, I grew it. I, I when I growing up, I played a lot with my dad growing up, but not like you know tournaments and you know uh, anything like that. But you know, I think it's a it's a it's a really good correlation with uh, professional sports and poker, just in terms of the discipline that it takes, um, the studying that you have to do. Um, you know, just being fundamentally sound, uh, not being too high, not being too low, being even keeled. Uh, it's on to the next play. You know, you put that game behind you and move it on. Because if you continue to look in the rearview mirror, um, you know, you can't really move forward and, and progress. Right. So um, I think those qualities um, are some of the, I guess, my skill set in terms of poker. Like I'm able to you know, not be flustered or let things go or, and that's a lot of my personality anyway, but I think it shines more in poker and I'm probably not as, you know, technical sound as, you know, I need to be in poker at times, Just, but like, I, like, I, I think I make up for it in other areas. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, you know. I would, I would say like playing, playing with you, I will say, okay guys. So we met, uh, a few years ago during the charity event in Vegas yep. and from, yep. I think, uh, was it, when it, was it your cousin on the same table with me or one of your friends? I can't remember. Yeah. I think so. I, I, but I, I know I met you at the, uh, at the charity event. Yeah. Even though I saw you playing and- poker before I met you though, I will say that. drinking up poker i mean drinking up wine playing poker hey listen i brought it out i brought it out i went and got my wine (laughs) yeah Yeah, so the uh, charity poker um event the charity series of poker put on by matt style which is amazing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yeah and that was fun and then one of my favorite times ever playing cash that I will remember mm-hmm. for life no, is when that, we were I in Jacksonville. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Ryan no, Reese. Epic night. <laughs> epic night. Legendary night. Like, it was crazy that night. Like, the wine was flowing. Like, it was good people. I think. Uh, so, who was Ryan, with? Ryan Reese was playing. Yeah. Ite, yep. Ite came. Yeah. Uh, well, we had a rail playing two five. Yeah, and we had a, they had like a twenty five person wait list for this one cash game table. Guys, you have no idea. It was I think my stack on two five. I, what was the buy in like five hundred dollars or something? Yeah, something and like my stack was like seven thousand. Yours was like yeah. five thousand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <a> <laughs> yeah, no, we couldn't uh, we couldn't lose. Oh my god, it was so fantastic! And then Ryan Reese sat down. He had never played cash before. Do you remember that? No, I do. I oh. do. I think we were on the end beside each other. You were at the other. Yeah, end. I was on the opposite end. Yeah, you was on the opposite end, but yeah, that no, was fun. It was an amazing night. Yeah, I still get people that will like watch the Thirst Sound streams or people that pop into like my DMs and they're like, 
I remember you from Jacksonville. We were waiting to play that game, and it was you and Richard and Brian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I hear people saying that even when I'm, I was in Vegas. Right? Y'all playing cash tonight? Y'all drinking wine? <laughs> <laughs> No, for sure. That was a good time. Yeah, that was so much fun. But so one of the things that the reason I brought that up is because I did get the chance to play with you. And I, I know that you're not like a big cash game player. But one of the things yeah. that I did notice about you is that even keel, like you were super chill and you were like, it is what it is, like type of vibe whenever you yeah. played, whether you won the pot or whether you lost the pot. Obviously, mm -hmm. that night was slightly different because we were super hyped. And like, yeah. we were like a little bit outrageous, <laughs> but I, for me, like playing poker for as long as I have, like, I don't have anything to compare it to the way that you have, you know, your background with, you know, with college football and really excelling and then in the NFL and really excelling. But mm -hmm. I would say that is definitely one of the most valuable assets in playing poker that you definitely have to your advantage. So whether or not you're technically sound, like you can always technically improve. You can yeah, always no, no, improve your sure. game. Yeah, no. And, and, and then the flip side, I think, you know, people that pump their stacks off often, I think they can improve that as well. I mean, you know, it's different. You know, I think we all have things that we can work on. Um, yeah. You know, but I just think that's a big part of my personality, just in terms of, you know, just always been uh, pretty laid back. Like it didn't, it isn't a part of my game that I have to work on, so to speak. Yeah. You know? um, but like I said, I mean, I it's always room to grow. And uh, and here's the thing: I think I learn from everybody. Like even leaving Jacksonville, because we were talking about where we were going next to play or whatever. And I remember talking to you. I was like, okay, critique my game. Like, what did you think? You remember I called you. I was like, tell yeah. me, tell me what you thought. Like, you know, just because, like, I'm, everybody asks me, well, how did you learn poker or whatever? Like, I'm all, if we sit out, I don't even care if I always like to interact with people and just find out, you know, what's, what are their strengths and weaknesses and what are they, think or thought about my game yeah or, you know just like so I mean I don't really have an ego about any of it you know I'm just always trying to uh enjoy it like I said it's a hobby for me and, and I really enjoy it but you know I also said if I was going to sit at the table and play um I didn't really want somebody being that much more prepared than me so mm -hmm. I actually put in more work just in terms of you know, being more fundamentally sound um, and doing, you know, just trying to execute uh, my game plan. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely, obviously, since Jacksonville, that was almost two years ago now. So mm -hmm. since then, you've, you've, I mean, you just had your epic run in the main event. And I mean, congratulations on that, by the no, way. That so I can't even imagine. I'm so, I'm like, so excited for you. I'm like proud as your friend. And then yeah, also no, like super sure. envious. <laughs> Oh uh, no! We can, hey, we can all celebrate together. Yeah, so. well, that's the thing. Is like, it's, <laughs> it, there's room at the table for everybody, and it's all. It's like, right. yes, like I want to see my friends succeed. Right. And right. but you. for what is the difference between that, like you know, like playing the Super Bowl and mm -hmm. winning the Super Bowl, and then playing over a period of five days? What's the difference? Right. Well, you know, I, I say this for me. Like I played when I played, uh, obviously in the main. I uh, I came in on day two. Yeah, so uh, like, I felt like a lot of the field had already played. Like I was coming in it when I played my first level. It was other players that already played twenty hours of poker. Right. So I just think that was a big advantage for me. And then we also had seventy five big blinds, and like I'm not. Ultra, I can play 75 big blinds all day long, you know, right. I play 20 or 15 or whatever, you know, so I was just able to, uh, you know, just stay out of any sticky spots and not getting cute at all, you know, <laughs> and I just, yeah, I just, I, I wasn't trying to get cute. I was just, you know, playing ABC and, you know, taking advantage of spots here and there. But um, before you know it, I looked up and it was day four or it was day five and toward the end of the day five and you know and and i'll say this like the main is obviously a different event it's a different beast you know yeah it's hands that i played in the main that 
in Jacksonville, I wouldn't probably play it that way. You know what right. I mean? So it's like you know, the just, like the Ace King hand that you got a yeah, lot of flack on. on the Ace King. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, so, you know, like it's certain spots where I don't know. I just felt like with the players that were left, like I felt like I was better than a lot of them. So I just didn't want to. You know, stick it in when I just felt like, well, I probably got an edge later in some other spots. So, yeah, that's you know, like and that's that's only for the main. You know, I mean, most of the tournaments that you know, because I made some big folds with two pair. I hit a set once. I don't know what just happened. I can still hear and see you. Okay, I can't <laughs> see or hear you. <laughs> Oh no. This is one of our technical difficulties. <laughs> so I, I tell you what, like I don't have to see. I'll uh continue going. How about that? But can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, that's good. <laughs> can can everybody else hear and see me? Yes, we can still hear and see you. Okay. Hmm. So where where, where were we? So um, the main... yeah, the hands that you would fold versus like yeah. in the main versus a regular tournament that you would be playing yeah no I, and here's the thing i i mean i think you want to have the mindset you play every tournament the same but obviously like the main is the super bowl and i think that's what you alluded to earlier um you know it isn't uh like the super bowl is obviously different from a one a one o'clock game on sunday in buffalo like you know no disrespect there but like it isn't the super bowl you know right. so um, you know, the Super Bowl is just, I mean, Super Bowl and obviously, uh, you know, playing in the main is, you know, the, that's the, the big one you want to win. I'm sorry. What was that last sentence? Your phone, uh, you're like lagging just a tiny bit now. Maybe it's the, uh, let me see. Can you try refreshing <laughs> your browser? Now, you know, I'm not good at all of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I think you're okay now. I don't know if you can see us yet. No, I think mine is screwed up. Like my stream is totally white. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's so weird. And I can totally see you still. Oh, there we go. Good. Yeah. Okay. See, okay. you're you're not as bad at the technical stuff as you think. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there are, uh, there are a couple of questions from the chat. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through. Uh, so Ranger 101 says this really is a hype interview. A lot of people are very excited uh, oh, to have you. you on here. So let's mm. see. Question, question. Uh, bet on Drew says, hey, Ebs and Richard. And the chat is like, look at Drew on first name basis with NFL football stars. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Flo Junkie wants to know, is it more fun to sack or punch a quarterback or win a tournament? <laughs> uh, I'll probably say sack a quarterback. Well, I mean, it depends on the tournament. Mm. Let me say that. <laughs> Cause I, I'll take winning the main over uh, get the say. Right. You know. What's yeah. What's been what? your favorite your favorite tournament so far? Other, th I mean, maybe it was the main, maybe it was something else. What's been the best part of your poker experience so far? Um, I came in third down in the Bahamas. That was a good one. I, I enjoyed playing. It was the It was the Bahamas twenty five k. Twenty five k. Yep. Yeah, and uh, I took third, and it was like it was a coin flip. I didn't get second for for sure. Like I mean, the short stack doubled and doubled and doubled and doubled and doubled. <laughs> Define <laughs> all the odds. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> like, I mean, like it was what it was, but like you know, third was a nice payday, and it was fun to run deep against a lot of the best players in the world. So. Um, yeah, I'd say the 25K, especially the PCA, it's it's filled with a lot of crushers and a lot of the yeah, most yeah. prestigious players. It was, it was, I was probably the only spot in the tournament. <laughs> like, so... How um, how different is that from your, like, your background before poker to now, like, oh, my God, I'm the spot? 
Well, I, I mean, I, let me say this. Like, uh, I say I'm the spot and I keep, I, you know, but, you know, it's one of those things where it's a humble confidence, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, like, like I said, I mean, it is a hobby. I do play for fun and I enjoy it. And, uh, but I also take it serious at the same time. So if we're, we're at the table together, I might, uh, I might give you a look or, um, you know, like, so it just depends. It, it depends on my mood really. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I always try to go in all tournaments prepared, uh, you know, being fundamentally sound. Um, and like I said, just like we were talking earlier, just, uh, I've seen so many players, uh, like really good players and technically sound, but it's like, if they lose a hand, like they're not the same player. Yeah. I've you been, know? I've been guilty of that. I no, have no, been. No, I think we all have. But like, <laughs> I just think, like, I just see it so often in a lot of big tournaments and a lot of big spots. I'm just like, wow, you know? Um, so I just think it's an edge, you know, it, it, it tilted the other way, you know? I so. think that's what makes poker so great because if, if, if it wasn't for the human emotion variable, mm -hmm. right, it wouldn't be as fun to watch. It wouldn't be as fun to play. No, no I, I totally agree. And I'll say this, I, I try to take the human element out of it when I play. I try to just, excuse me, I try to, you know, for lack of a better word, like I just try to, play like a robot in a sense, just in terms of being emotionally not attached to the results. Yeah. You know? And, you know, making the best decisions possible and, you know, living with whatever happened. Right. I, I tell you what, I, I, I'm probably way more emotional in my own game than. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I've, I've heard about these home games. You guys yeah, got the cigars they're epic. going. They're epic. They're epic. <laughs> so, <laughs> Is there like a lot of shit talking happening in these home games? Oh, oh, absolutely it is. Like it's a lot of here's the thing. Like we actually could you need to come down for one too. All right, um, I'm in. Of, yeah, I got I got a lot of buddies that always say they're gonna um, come. Actually I had a couple come down. Um but here's the thing, and we only do because it's not even about the money, it's really about kicking your buddy's butt in this game. <laughs> it's about you know, winning. Everybody brings <laughs> over, you know, a glass of wine or, or a bottle and, and food and everything. I got like three people in my neighborhood that plays my cousin Rodney, who, who you met. I love Rodney. Um, actually, he, Hi, Rodney. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, you know, he finished, uh, he finished, he final table, but so P just... Oh, really? And uh, it was like, yeah, like 45K payday for him. So it was, uh, it was a good, really good one. Oh, my gosh. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. I know how, oh, my yeah. God, even when I remember when we were in Jacksonville and he was always just sitting behind. Oh, my God. I remember I was, I went on this, like, I had been drinking, guys. <laughs> and I went on this, like, tangent about polyamory. Yeah. And Rodney's recording yeah, he, me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I said, you know he got you on video. He's recording you the whole time. Yeah, I think maybe a couple of weeks ago, we might have talked about that while we were out in Vegas or whatever. I think I might have texted you, like, where were you or something like that. Yeah. But, oh, Rodney's so great. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm definitely coming to the home game. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll bring mm -hmm. one of my one of my fellow Thirst Sounds members. Yeah, no, no, y'all come on down and kick it, and we could do, we could go live at the, at the, uh, oh, at the table. That <laughs> would be epic! Oh yeah, my god! Yeah, All right, no, guys, no, we're no. definitely doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. All the shit talking, I can't wait. That's part, yeah. honestly, that's one thing that I really. It's like when I think about when I first started playing poker, it was the shit talking in like a very friendly jovial way yeah, not no, not no. to be like a dick right yeah no no absolutely yeah no i mean it's needling and sarcasm but um in good nature and good fun yeah you know? um and like i said like our buy-ins at the house is 200 bucks so <laughs> like, before you know it you're rebuys, just in <laughs> but it's unlimited rebuys but at the same time like the pots get juicy, actually, because we play eight, nine handed. And uh, I mean, it's rebuys like after the first two or three hands. 
Oh <laughs> my gosh. I just yeah. can't. I feel like it would be like our game in Jacksonville, like no, on steroids. Totally, totally. <laughs> That's why I told you, you need to get down here and play. Now. I am so coming. Okay, guys. Yeah. Soon we are going to have a home game at Richard's Place <laughs> streaming here on the Thirst Lounge just for you guys. <laughs> Okay, a couple questions now. Uh, Drew wants to know, does poker help you satisfy that competitive spirit that football did? Yeah, no, ab absolutely it does. That's why I play, just in terms of, it's a great outlet, and it keeps me mentally sharp. Um, like I said, you have to be fundamentally sound, uh, attention to detail. Um, you know, everything, you study your opponents, like everything that... Uh, made me a good football player um i can transfer those skills over into poker and uh, try to get better each and every time out so um and i love to compete like yeah. uh, i mean my, my 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 daughters they play volleyball and we play we had a bunch of family over on sundays and we play uh, volleyball in the backyard but like I want to smash and spike on the head every time we go out and play. So, <laughs> so do, do your kids, I, you have four kids, yes? Yep. Okay, so what are their ages? Uh, my youngest is 13 and my oldest is 17. Okay, so are they so as competitive? Been, so we had four at, we have four kids, um, five and under. So when my oldest was five, yeah. Your so wife they, is a saint. Well, they were like right there. So they all almost like twins, you know. Oh my gosh! So, yeah, so we got them in, got them out, and and now, like I said, we got I got a seventeen year old. So I'm looking to be an empty nester soon. I'm trying to get them on out. My youngest is fifteen. My daughter <laughs> just moved out at eighteen, and I'm like, it seems like it would be fun, but it's kind of like a panic. Yeah, no, it is. It is. <laughs> I mean, it's like you don't want them to go, but then you know. You got to do what's best and let them fly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm almost like, it, it is that bittersweet where I'm just like, ooh, I can yeah. see, I can see the top of the hill now. I've got three more yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> and my oldest now, he's a senior in high school. So like all of those, um, you know, prom and this and that. And I'm just like, oh, it's just stressful. <laughs> when you see the way that you are with with your kids now like you you married your high school sweetheart right and yep. now you have four children and you guys have gone through a career in the nfl together and now she's supporting this craziness that is poker yeah <laughs> <laughs> well well actually i want to i want to elaborate on that a little bit because <laughs> i imagine that I imagine that she's like, okay, great, like football, retired, be home, and like, you know, yeah. and yeah. all of a sudden, you've got this extra hobby. We're yeah. going to call it a career now. I don't care what you say, <laughs> it's a career. <laughs> how how did that conversation go down? Well, at first, it was like, well, you know, just in terms of poker, like, what do you mean we'll go out and play poker? And I was like, well, at first, it wasn't a big deal, you know? And then I probably played in, and I, let me tell you, the first time I played the main event, which was, so this year was, I think, my f fifth or sixth time playing the main. Okay. Somewhere like some five or six times. But, like, the first year I played, like, I absolutely had no clue. <laughs> like, I just said it's the Super Bowl and I'm playing in it. <laughs> you know, like, if everybody played, like, I was like, I'm in. Me and Grant, I'm in. Um... And then a couple of those, and she was just like, like, what are you really doing? You're just throwing away money, you know? And so I was like, all right, no, that's true. Like, I want to get better. So I, you know, made some efforts, got better. And then after the third uh, tournament, um, when it, when I came, she was like, when's the next? There's that, yeah, there's that, like, well, so, uh, <laughs> you can't, as long as you're losing. Yeah, then, and, then it went, then, and then it went to, like, well, now she's online looking for different tournaments. So I think it's, uh, <laughs> yes! so I, I'll tell you this, I can say I'm a winning player. That's, 
that's I'll try to keep it like that. I mean, we can we can all see that now. I mean, you've you've gone from you know like you you have double the caches that I have, and I haven't played. I've been playing a lot longer than you, so I need to step up my my uh, uh, my game, my <laughs> my mental like my mental and emotion. Like I need to be a robot at the table. <laughs> That, uh, no, you're not a robot. You're not a robot. No, I, I'm definitely I not. Oh my goodness. Mode, I don't know if you can go in a robot mode. <laughs> I I have been able to sometimes, but I have yeah, I have it is yeah, hard. Your personality <laughs> is a lot more bubbly than mine. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think I would ever use the word bubbly to describe you. Like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> so okay, so then she supported that. So, but now, like, what's that like for you with your with your kids? And you have all teenagers now, right. and what is the difference difference in parenting styles that you've seen from like what you went through versus what you are now able to give and provide your children? Yeah, well, I, I'll say this. You know, like I was very fortunate and blessed to grow up with uh, my mom and my dad. And, um, you know, I got tough love from my dad, but I also got the nourishing, nourishing side from my mom. And uh, I think it's made me a lot more well-rounded, you know. And I could also remember it was a stark difference in terms of how my dad told me to handle the situation, how my mom told me to handle it. Mm. You know, my mom was just, she was super laid back like me, but she was a lot more just even like emotion-based. You know, and my dad was more uh, thoughtful and not that my mom wasn't, but my dad was just a lot more thoughtful and gave me the wisdom um, to know how to handle situations. So Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, something uh, that I was just blessed with having, you know, you know, both parents just to be able to because I could just I just often think about like if it was just my mom, I wouldn't have been able to see the other side or with my dad, like. I might have been just too tough, right. you know. Um, so I just think with you know, with me and my wife now, um, we go back and forth. We always remain a united front in front of the kids, even mm. if we don't agree. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I think uh, you know, like we're able to have that balance in terms of you know giving them tough love and then also um, knowing when to say when. And then I tell you this. Girls are totally different. Like I got two boys and two girls, mm-hmm. and my boys no issues. No, I mean, just straight in the road, you know. The girls, like they got daddy around the finger, but also like, like they're a handful too. Oh, I know. Believe me, <laughs> it's it's crazy because yeah. I grew up the oldest of three girls, mm. and I. I still look back and I am amazed that my mom didn't go to jail for murder because <laughs> we like gave her living hell, you know, yeah, as three yeah. girls and we were fighting. I have a sister that's a year younger than me and we were fighting all the time. Yeah. And, and my two kids, they get along so well mm-hmm. that they like, they're the united front against me right. and i'm like yeah, yeah. i'm like you guys are supposed to tell on each other not keep <laughs> secrets <laughs> so uh, that's, funny. <laughs> that's funny yeah no, no. and you see a lot of your personality traits come out in them as well too you know so yeah but it, like i said it's a joy it's a lot of responsibility but it's all worth it yeah of course oh my goodness so what about uh okay so the wife is playing a little bit of poker what about the kids are they playing any poker uh but like i just think like every now and then my wife would jump in the home game but it's not often yeah. um like my kids like they started to the understand the game like they didn't really want to learn but then like when i had a few caches and you know running deep in events like so now they'll be like they'll text me i'll be at the table they'll text me and like dad how many big blinds do you have you know, <laughs> you know, so it's little things like that where I'm just like, okay, all right, they get it, you know? Yeah. So it's fun. Yeah. But like I said, for me, like I don't have a full schedule in terms of, uh, terms of poker. Like I'll pick out uh, a few events that I like to play, you know, right. and it's maybe, it's maybe eight to 10 events a year. Right. Like so I said, how, how do you decide? Poker. How do you decide what tournaments you're going to play? 
Like, well, um, whatever is good, just in terms of, What's yeah. Good? Like, what is good I, to I Richard Seymour? Yeah, so I don't really like to go to, uh, like, tournaments or casinos that's kind of ran down. Mm-hmm. So I like a lot of the Bahamas stuff, and they moved to the Bahama Party Poker. Um, I'll travel to a few stops on um, World Poker Tour, and I like to do some of the Vegas stuff. Yeah. Um, I went to Barcelona last year and played in some party poker stuff out there. Um, so I like, and I like, I, I, I strictly just play um, tournament poker. Yeah. Um, just because I like to climb the ladder. Like, like I'm, and trust me, the money is good, but like, I don't really play necessarily for the money. Like I like, I like tournament poker because it's going to be. There's a finish line. It's a finish line. We yeah. are, we know the winner. Like, and that's how I'm driven. Like, I want to, I want to hold the trophy one day, you yeah. know, and I've came close in several events, but like, you know, like, I, I just know too, like when it gets down close, like it's a lot of it is just like, you got to run good and win flips at the right times too. So yeah. a lot of it you can't control and, and I'm okay with that. Um, but like I said, going back, like I don't play a full schedule. Um, I'm, I, I'm not a grinder, but I do enjoy playing like honestly like when i made it to day five like and it was like the last level before day six when i busted right but like to be honest i was sitting at the table and i just saw how many people were tired Mm. and you know just kind of i could just tell like i was like if i get a few hands right here they in big trouble it's on right (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you know obviously it is what it is but you know it was it was good because i had my rv in the back of the rio so it was just good on breaks i could just go decompress um relax and just you know stay mentally fresh um, yeah fresh and just yeah. playing optimal, you know so um and I, like i said i'll just pick tournaments out that i just feel like you know um has a really good structure but, you know, also has a nice payday up top. Yeah, a good value. Yeah. Yeah, a good value. Yeah. Absolutely. There you go. So you know all the right words to say. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about, okay, so you did the five days for the main event, and, like, you recognize that people are exhausted. And I think that, to me, that's a huge component that a lot of poker players are missing is that factor of just, like, longevity and prepping your body mentally and physically and because you've competed at such a high level for such a long time like how do you prep like what is your like the beginning of your day look like what does the end of the day look like like after day two and day three and day four like did you have a routine before bed a routine in the morning yeah well i'll say this like so like i've been for the last several years i've like um interviewed a lot of the top nutritionists in the world and you know uh, doctors just in terms of longevity not even you know just aesthetically looking good but just like just in terms of pure health yeah um you know because obviously playing football you hear a lot about concussions and you know alzheimer's later in life and that sort of thing so actually i met with uh, dr malu he was the doctor that um, did the movie concussions that oh, will smith yes. played mm-hmm. So actually, he gave me like some DHA pills, which I think he said they're good for everybody to really take. So it's, I take the DHA on a regular basis, just and in researching the DHA, which is like official, but it's also good for any mild cases of depression or anything that you could possibly be dealing with. So I take that um, when I get up in the morning, like I, I'll do, like I've been doing like uh, intermittent fasting. Um, yeah, we talked about so, this. Yeah, we talked about the yeah. Mm-hmm. So like I, I and I also kind of go low carb too, um, but you know higher fats and an adequate amount of protein. Um, but I will say this: so I do that, and then once I get ready to play poker, like I don't eat. Period. Yeah. So like that morning, I'll get up. I'll have water, sparkling, sparkling water. I may have a, a little coffee. The bulletproof coffee? Do you have that? I'll have some bulletproof. Sometime I'll just go black coffee. Yeah. Um, 
and then like I won't eat on dinner break. And if I if I'm if I'm feeling a little hungry, maybe I'll have a few almonds or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but I try to really fill back up on water again, sparkling water. And at the end of the night, once I'm done playing, that's when I'll have like you know a piece of salmon or some veggies or whatever the case may be. Right. Um, and that's kind of been my routine, and I've noticed um, that my mental clarity and my focus just skyrocketed yeah but, you know and the I brain, also the like, brain fog is like yeah, it no. disappears yeah it's, it's like i can see through the cards mm. when i'm super locked in you know so i think that's been a big part of my game just in terms of being like because i just got an attitude where like you're gonna fall down before i fall down mm-hmm. like it just is what it is like that's just been my dna and my makeup you know so uh but in, in terms of, I, I think I wouldn't do it if like it, 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 if it hasn't been something that you've kind of led up to before you get ready to go play ball. So. Yeah, for sure. Like I, so I also do intermittent fasting, and that's something I've been okay. doing for like ten years now. Uh-huh. So before it became like the thing, right? right because because right. it, it's all of a sudden become this thing, and I feel like yeah, no. people aren't. Um, really researching like the how and the why, right? right? And they're just, they're just like they crash and they go, right? right? And so now I'm at the point where I wake up and I I can go and have a workout. I can have a fasted workout and I can lift heavy and I'm pring yeah. and it's no yeah. problem. And then I come back and I have my bulletproof coffee and I get that through my day and I eat in like a six to eight hour window. Oh, yeah. But I also listen to my body. So there are some days, like you said, like I may be hungry, so like I'll grab like. A little snack. I like the Epic bars. Have you had those? Epic. Yes, they're just um, pure. I think I've, I've seen the I've seen a package of them. They're like pure meat bars. So they have the jerky, right. but then they have the meat yeah. bars that are soft. Yep. And they're so good. And so in, on days that I'm like, I need to eat something, I'll yeah. grab that, and I feel yeah. completely satisfied, and it gets yeah, me. Yeah, I think through. it's important, like you said, to listen to your body and just know. Uh, and be in tune with your body. Yeah. You know? But so I do agree with you as well in terms of uh, I'll intermittent fast some days. Some days I'll just completely fast. Or some days if I'm hungry, I may have, you know, some bacon and eggs in the morning if, and avocado if yeah. I feel like, you know, I'm ready to eat, you know. Uh, and I'll just listen to my body. Um, and I'll say this. Uh, so next month, well, what about... Well, October 6th. I don't remember how far it is. 45 days away or whatever. But it's my birthday and I'll be turning 40. Woo woo! The yeah, big 4 so actually, actually, I'm trying to uh, lean up a little bit before my 40th. So, um, yeah. I'm I'm at that spot now. I think we actually talked yeah. about this in Jacksonville. We were like, all right, let's do this. Let's get lean. Yeah. And then yeah. life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Like this you life. Know, my biggest, yeah, no, my biggest issue too is like cheesecake. Yeah, you know, <laughs> cheesecake and this wine, but then also too, I'm gonna tell you, like we go to dinner or something, or you know, the wife cooks. Whatever the kids don't eat, then I'll finish it off sometime. Mm. You know, are so you like, are you one of those people that are like you cannot waste food? Pretty much, like if I, if it's on my plate, like I've just been conditioned, like this is what you eat, you know. Right. Um, but so now I'm just a little more portion control now. So I'm trying to be, be better with it. Yeah. What's, what's the favorite dish that your wife makes your favorite? <sighs> Ooh, uh, she does really like outstanding spaghetti. So like, it's unbelievable. Really? Yeah. Like, yeah. And then, um, she does like a, uh, steak and potato like it like so like it's it's good eating which i don't really mess with potato but like i'll do a lot of steak a lot of uh she does a really good salmon as well like mm. salmon asparagus uh it's yeah so you come on down Evo. all right mrs seymour i'm coming for that cooking <laughs> we'll eat good we'll play some poker we'll get a workout in oh, all of it. The whole oh, I'm so in. I'm so excited. We're actually we're planning this like in the next like week. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna no, figure out a sure. date yeah, no, we'll and I'm gonna it. come. Maybe yeah. I come for the fortieth birthday. 
Hey, hey. Do the full we bash. A, we got a live band going. We're going to do it right. Oh, my, okay. I'm in. I'm in for the 40th <laughs> birthday. Third Sound, you guys are coming with me. <laughs> All right, so let's go through. There's some more questions. They are so excited, um, oh, that's good. which is which is so amazing. Uh, let's see. Richard M. Bernis 23 says, Richard, did you have a favorite meal you ate before each game to feel the most healthy and also a favorite meal before during a poker session? We kind of went through that because now we know that you're fasting. Yeah, mostly. so like obviously doing poker, I don't eat at all. Like I won't. Uh, that morning, I'll just have water, sparkling water, a little coffee, and I try to push that all the way through out. Um, and a lot of times, in a lot of events, I'll probably come in like the third level or something anyway. So I'm not playing like a full day. <laughs> I mean, maybe like in oh, your okay, world, Phil, you know, I may be missing some value. But, okay, but... okay, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> You got to start, you got to bring like your, your, like your band and your dancers whenever you start coming in. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm too lucky for that. But, it, but, it, but I'll say this in terms of uh, like before I got ready to go play. Um, and I always try to eat about four hours before the game. Mm -hmm. So I eat four hours before the game. And normally it would be like, some type of uh chicken breasts and like uh pasta or something like that like right. i i don't know yeah i always like the a little alfredo pasta with a little chicken and broccoli in it and that just felt like it just sustained me for hours you know and then i like before the game like i didn't want to feel any food in me like i just wanted to be ready to go i'm ready to go play or not have a full stomach at all so right. even if i was a little hungry i was okay with that how different was that from your teammates uh they everybody kind of had their own routine you yeah. know like some guys could not eat on game day like even if we had an eight o'clock game at night they couldn't eat or and some people they never ate breakfast so it just was kind of player dependent yeah like, everyone did what was right for them yeah, everybody kind of did what was right. And then, like, I'm not, like, super superstitious about, like, well, I had this meal or my socks was this way. Like, you know, I just felt, hey, man, you're a baller. Go out and get it done, you know. So you weren't superstitious in football. Do you have any superstition in poker? Um, No, I don't think so. I don't, I'm trying to think. Uh, no, I, I don't. Like, I mean, other than, like, not eating. And just the, the mental clarity, but like that's probably the only thing that I kind of, I kind of go with. Yeah, but that's not a superstition. That's like performance yeah, I mean, and like proven track record. Right. Of no, performance. Sure. Like so, I, I, that's why I say I say no. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Ranger one one says Richard, in your long NFL career, who was your favorite offense to scheme against and your favorite quarterback to sack? Hmm. Uh, good question. Um, to sack, I'd probably say maybe Philip Rivers in terms of sacking him, just because you know he was a little mouthy. But I mean, a good he guy. He played. Look, he played for the Chargers, yeah. The Chargers, yeah. Okay. Now he's still, yeah, he's still with the Chargers. How? Um, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I, I'd probably go with uh, Philip Rivers just in terms of. Because he was a quarterback that would like to talk back, you know. Uh, like so, he was a little mild, which but it was all in fun. Um, and I like to go against offenses that like to try to dictate what they're going to do, just in terms of they feel like some teams scheme against each other. Like when I was with the Patriots, like we did whatever. Each week we were a different team, like we always tried to take advantage of other teams' weaknesses. Right. Some teams have the philosophy of this is what we do and our team is better than yours and we're, we're going to continue to do this. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to play against the teams that like to feel like they're better because um, I like to compete and just show them that they're not, and that, you know. Yeah. But yeah, so teams like that, you know. There was a there was a, a player what was it, a few weeks ago a player who said that he loved like he hated playing against you or loved playing against you who was this guy let me see 
Oh yeah, Kevin Mawai. He said he hated playing against me. Why? Sorry for the Jets. I mean, well, we always battled. Like it was, and actually, you know, he's a really good player. He just got in the Hall of Fame, and I guess one of the reporters were asking him, you know, which guy that you didn't like to go against, and he he said me. Um, That's a just compliment. For, yeah, no, it was it was a high it was a high compliment. I yeah. like. I mean, we um, we competed like, and like I said, he's a he's going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and you know we had some epic battles. Yeah. And, yeah, no, so it was fun. Like it, it's always competing against um, the best players in the world, and that's why I play poker now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's see. Were you more nervous in your first NFL game or your first poker tournament? Uh, I probably was born nervous in my first poker game just because I wasn't, I didn't know what to do. Like, I shouldn't have been there. At least, at least in football, like, I had a clue of what I was doing and how to get it done. Um, but like I said, I played my first main event and I shouldn't have been on the table. Was that <laughs> you know, your Was that your that. first tournament? I think I may have played one or two tournaments before that, but mm. it could have been, it, it possibly could have been my first turn. No. I don't know. But if it wasn't my first, it was no more than like three tournaments. Oh, wow. I okay. Yeah. So I was like, oh, let's jump in and get it going. <laughs> that was a All right. <laughs> another another football question. Uh, Sheffield says, Ebony, can you ask Mr. Seymour? I love this. Mr. Seymour, they're being so polite. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Seymour about his old teammates on New England and Oakland. Did they play poker together on the plane or hotels or even some home games? Yeah, no, actually, we would do it on, like, Monday Night Football. So, like, obviously, we play on Sundays. So, that Monday night, like, everybody was around watching Monday Night Football. And uh, we'd get together uh, as a team. Well, not everybody. Rather, it was, like, the O-line and D-line kind of got together, a few guys, and um, we'd play um, yeah. some poker. Or even if we had a long trip, like, if we were traveling from, you know, just say Oakland to Miami, like we would be on the back of the plane and you, we played like all kind of card games for a four hour trip, you know? Yeah. And I'll say this, we always tried to keep the stakes low because we didn't want anybody feeling like, you know, having any debt over their head and then now they got to get ready to go play you yeah. know, a game. So we just tried to, well, at least I did. I tried to just keep it, you know, friendly to it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know, it's, it's, so I used to, oh my God, years ago, I used to play, um, I used to play poker with a lot of the Twins players and the Red Sox players. They used to spring train in Fort mm -hmm. Myers, which is my hometown. And so mm -hmm. I was, I got invited out as like one of the boys because they were like, no wives, no girlfriends, but Ebony can come because she plays wow. poker. <laughs> and I remember, right. I remember just like watching like, like a lot of the veterans would kind of like shield the rookies because they didn't want their ego to get involved with the like type of betting that was being done on the poker table. Right. Did you see any yeah. of that? Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I just think it's wise in the long run. Like, I mean, you don't want guys, you know, feeling like they got had or took or feeling a certain way, you know, before we got ready to go play a big game. You know, yeah. you wanted everybody focused and dialed in. You know, even though you want to do something to pass the time, you know, it, at the end of the day, you know, you winning a few, a few grand isn't worth, you know, what it could the potential downside. Yeah, the downsides of what could happen. Yeah. Okay. So let me see. Okay. So Daniel Negreanu, we're going to pivot completely back to poker a little bit. Daniel, no, Daniel Negreanu said that you are one of the nicest guys on the tour. Mm. How, do, how do you feel about that with his very polarizing uh, image right now? <laughs> yeah. Um, me and Daniel's always been very friendly. Uh, and I'll say this, like, I'm a really friendly guy to everybody. Like, I mean, like. I, it's definitely in I your nature. Yeah, it's just who I am. You know, like, it isn't something that I have to try to do. Like, it's just who I am. And I just try to treat people as I want to be treated. Try to give everybody the common respect and courtesy. Um, 
So, I mean, that's a huge compliment. I'll say that. Have you have you seen, have you heard the talk that he talks about, because I believe he's a vegan. I know he's vegetarian at least, but I think he's a vegan. Have you heard him making, like, all these cases about professional athletes being vegan and not having a bunch of meat and all this crazy? I, 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 I see, I mean, because we follow each other on Twitter, so I'll see some of the stuff that, just in terms of, you know, him being a vegan, but, like, I, I don't know. I, I don't really get into a lot You're like, of I'm going to stay in my lane. Yeah, no, I'm just kind of <laughs> like, man, I, like, I mean, whatever you feel that is the right thing for you to do, whether you're a vegan, you're a carnivore, whatever the case may be, like, you know, I, I think you want to pass along good information, Yeah. you know, but I think passing it along and letting everybody else be the judge of what they want to do, you know? Informed opinions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what I try and do. Actually, that's the way that I kind of like raise my kids with a lot of the stuff where I was like, listen, I just my job as your parent is to just give you information and you can kind of decide what mm -hmm. it is that you're going to do. But it, you won't be ignorant. Right. No, absolutely. You know, so my, I, my job yeah. is to give you that. Yeah, but I, I do see it's a lot of debates on Twitter that so <laughs> the, the debates on poker Twitter are unlike oh. anything I've ever seen. Yeah, no, yes, I, I, I'll see some of it, but like, I, you know, <laughs> you're I like know. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, man, like, the kids got to go to a game or something. Yeah. Like, so yeah, big deal. So I know that I think we talked about this once before. Are you in like a like you are in a men's group or you do some volunteering? Yeah. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, no. So um, I mean, it's it's several. Um, you know, outreach or charity deals that, you know, I do back in South Carolina. Um, one of them is called Blessing God's Children, and we always give back for the last. And my mom kind of heads it up now just in terms of making sure the elderly in the church have food or, you know, the kids have uh, Christmas gifts and, you know, going back, we have book bag drives and school, you know, just making sure they have those. So, like, I just think it's important um, to do your part yeah. and, you know, just try to leave the world a better place. And mm. uh, if you're able to be a blessing to other people and you can, I just think it's important to do that, you know, and everybody can do whatever they can do. Like it doesn't have to be money, it can be time. It can be, um, you know, whatever, it, whatever it might be, whatever is your niche and whatever is your lane. I just think it's important. Um, at the end of the day, um, to be a good person, period. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, so when you think about your legacy, obviously people are going to say football and, and this, but as a family man and, you know, your wife and your children, when you think about that, like, what do you want people to say about Richard Seymour? Uh, no, that's, um, well, like you said, I think, uh, I would, I think, one of the biggest compliments that my friends, they always give me is uh, they admire how I treat my wife and how I treat my children and how they respect me and how I respect them. Um, so I think family um, is extremely important to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I grew up as a man of faith. Um, so, you know, I just always try to live my life uh, you know, pleasing to God and um, and just letting that exude and, you know, not trying to be overbearing in anything, you know, I think the best example is how you live your life. Yeah. You know, like, you know, the Bible says you judge a tree by the fruit, the fruit that it bears. Um, so anybody can tell you anything. Right. But if you just watch their life, you just watch how they treat other people, how people treat them, you know. You watch the fruit that they bear and yeah. you have, you know, just more insight in terms of, you know, who they are as a person. Yeah. And I was like, people can grow. Like, I, I, I've met, you know, people that, you know, may not have been on that track, but just over the course of time with maturity and understanding, um, they were just able to mature and grow into the man or the woman that they are today. So it can, anybody can do it. No, I, I believe that wholeheartedly because I was one of those people that 
I took every angle that I could. I cut every corner I could. And I was out for me. And mm -hmm. I didn't care, like, the trail of tears I left behind. And mm -hmm. now that I've gotten older and I've really thought about how I make people feel, mm -hmm. I've changed with what, you know, the impact that I want to leave behind and the message that I want to leave behind. And so I completely agree that anyone can evolve and grow into whatever it is that they want to be. And it just comes with, like, effort and intention. Right. No, for sure. I, I totally agree with that. You know, I used to tell my kids all the time, like, do what you're told when you're told and with a respectful attitude like that. Like they could recite that ever since they were a kid. Do what you're told when you're told and with a respectful attitude. And I think and I also say with the respectful attitude, just because like, you know, if somebody here's the thing, you can go to a restaurant and if a waiter is like, can I help you? Right. Or, you know, like, or you just know <laughs> the energy, it's like, or, you know, or you got, you have somebody who's very attentive and would you like anything else? Or, you know, so like, you just want to exude that type of confidence and people can pick up on that. Like, so I just think it's good to be a good person and not looking for anything in return because I just, I don't know, I just think at the end of the day, um, you know, I mean, it's just, just good to be a good person. Yeah, for sure. I think, so one of the things that I told my kids is like, okay, listen, if you ever disagree with like a teacher or someone that is in a position that you need to respect, whatever you do, do not be disrespectful. If they are in the wrong and I come up there and I need to check them, the <laughs> one thing they better not tell me is that you talked back or you were extremely disrespectful because then I can no longer be on your side. Right. No, I totally agree. And so like I make sure that I'm like, listen, I am I am the queen of now checking people and putting putting them in their place in the most respectful manner. Like I'll be like, "Sir." <laughs> and right. then insert like really like I'm tearing them down comment, but right. nothing this like, you know. Right. Yeah, no, <laughs> I can I can I get it. Yeah. I, I, I can have my moments too though. <laughs> All right, let's see if there's any more questions before I let you go, because I know that we, we started an hour late and you yeah, are no. so amazing. Let's see. What is your real opinion of Brady's fumble against the Raiders years ago? Uh, it was the tuck rule. So, like, I mean, <laughs> here's the thing. And I played for both teams. So, like, yeah. You know, and, and obviously it was the tuck rule when I was in New England. And then obviously with my time out in Oakland, obviously a lot of the fans would always ask about, you know, being on the other side and because it was a really big play. And if you watch the play just with your natural eye, it does seem like a fumble. But the way the rules stated it, like it's a tuck rule and now they've since changed it, you know. Yeah. So I was on the good side of the rule at that time. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, scrolling through. Let's see. Who's your favorite professional poker player? Oh, man, it's a lot of really good players. Um, mm. And why? I want to know and why. Um, mm. It's a lot of really good people that I've met in poker. I'll, I'll say that. Like, I've met a lot of really good people just in terms of... Um, you know, knowing and understanding the game and just also, uh, you know, just hanging out outside of poker as well. Um, I, but I'll say, you know, me and Jason Kuhn have a really good relationship. Um, and I've seen his study habits. And, yeah, he's a beast. You know, yeah, and the, and the time that he puts in. And, and I told him I'm never going to put that kind of time in. But like, <laughs> he, like he, he puts it in, you know. Um, and, and, and like I said, like, so we have a, just a really good relationship and a quick story of how we met. We both busted a tournament at the same time and we were walking down the hall. I was like, uh, man, you hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry. All right. We grabbed a bite to eat and we've seen each other in passing before, but not like hanging out and kicking it. And we, we went to grab dinner, maybe, I mean, lunch at, I don't know, maybe about two o'clock and we didn't leave and we had just met each other yeah and we did, yeah and we didn't end up leaving uh lunch it was probably about 
It was after midnight that night. What? Yeah. So like oh. what happened, I had like my wife came, his girlfriend at the time, who's now his uh, fiance, she came over. I had some other friends who played in the NFL. They all came over. The chef came out, cooked us up a bunch of good food because they messed up the order first. And then it just, it turned into like this big party. And like, we just were able to share um, a lot of really good stories. And he was able to help me a lot. I was able to help him in other areas a lot. So it was just a natural uh, bond that night that we, and we talked about, like, we didn't even talk about poker. Like we just talked about life and, um, you know, just was able to share human experiences with each other. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, like, we all just kind of had that that moment in that time. And, like, I mean, put it like this: we just got to know each other that night. But it was it was laughter, it was tears, mm. it was joy. Like, so we just shared so much and was just so open and honest. And it was like, man, like we were like brothers that we didn't even know about. You yeah. know, so, like it was just good from that aspect. Yeah. And but like I said, like I've met so many really good people um, in poker over the course of my short time of playing. Yeah, I will say that's one thing that I've learned to appreciate a lot more as I've gotten older is when two people just show up and there's no uh, like no walls, no bullshit, no pretense. Right. The amount of like authentic connection that can happen. Yeah. Yeah. And and being able to like I know exactly when you're like there's tears there's laughter and you are like you're the family you never knew you had. Right. right. Um. Like I've I've been lucky that I've had that here in Austin a lot lately with with women which I before you know five years ago if you would have told me that I have like twelve like hardcore girlfriends in Austin I'd be like liar. <laughs> right. Right. No, <laughs> you know. But cool. but now I'm showing cool. up differently. Right. And, and I'm realizing that my energy is being reciprocated in mm -hmm. ways that like now I'm not expecting anything from anybody. I'm just expecting right. myself to be a good person and to go out right. there and right. be positive. Right. Yeah. And I, and I always looked at it like every five years you want to evolve and be a different person than you were like. So at 30, when I became 35, like I look back and I was a totally different guy. Like my experience was different. Like, I've grown so much. And, and here's the thing, like, I would look back at things that I did and I was like, I would say to myself, like, man, like, you were so far off base there or yeah. whatever, you know? So I, I just think it's also really good to examine yourself um, and to be a critic of yourself in terms of things that you need to do better, but also not, not hard on yourself either, you know? Um, be compassionate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you try to treat everybody else good, but I think it's really important to treat yourself, um, you know, equally as good. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, like, anything, any things that you, like, tell yourself that are, like, maybe, like, your mantra, like, your personal, like, reminders to yourself? Um, I'll just say this. Like, I was always born with, uh, I, I don't know, from a young age, like, I always had a, a lot of confidence just in terms and, and no. not even like arrogant. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, just, you know, but just in terms of uh like feeling like if anybody can do it, I can do it. Mm. You know? Why not me? Like that was always like and I think that came from my dad and my mom just um instilling that confidence in me from an early age, you know. Um, but I also, and I'll tell you this, like, I also always felt like, you know, just because of my background, I always felt like I had the hand of God on my life mm. from an early age, you know? So I always felt like no matter what I did, I always felt like I would be blessed in whatever I did or whatever I touched. Like, that's just always been my feeling and my vibe. Like actually my cousin Rodney, he, he talked about it. He was like, man, like you gave me so much confidence just yeah. in terms of the way that you walk and carried yourself. Like he was like certain things that he would just think about, is it okay? Or should we do, you know, it was like, I just kind of followed your lead on some things and it just opened some doors and opened my eyes, you know? So like, I think that's probably what I lean on a lot. Um, but I think it also comes from, a very authentic and um, it's kind of in my DNA and my essence. Um, but it's also, you know, I, I think it's something that's just been built up 
over the course of time, just like with my faith and, you know, believing that, you know, I can do it because he says I can do it, right. you know, like, yeah, so it, like, it takes that practice and like, like using Rodney as an example, like your, your energy is contagious, right? So right. whether it's positive or negative, that's up to you. Right. And you're like empowering individuals around you to feel, to even get a piece of that confidence, a piece of yeah. that, that yeah. self belief, because mm-hmm. I feel like so many people, like, so many people get so offended at confidence Mm -hmm. and like they will accept someone who's insecure before they will accept someone who is a hundred percent confident in who they are. Right. right. And I I love telling people, I'm like, that's none of my business. Like (laughs) you keep your, you keep your, your stuff that you think about me over there while I'm over here being very confident. And I worked really hard to get to this point. And right. I don't need you yeah. taking that away from me. <laughs> right. No, no. I think that's truly important. I think you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. So what is next for you in poker? I don't know. Like, uh, Jacksonville want me to come down there and play in that tournament. Um, the best bet bounty. But, like, I'll see. Um, I may – I know some stuff going on at the Brigada, even though I don't like to go up there too often. It's just personal preference, but if they have a good tournament, maybe, maybe there. I don't. I don't really know though. Um, and then I, in November, I know uh, Party Poker has some stuff in uh, Bahamas. Yeah. So, but like I said, here's the thing: like people ask me, "You coming to this tournament or that tournament?" Like, I make my schedule up like probably a week out. <laughs> <laughs> like well, I'll, fi- I'll figure it out like the week of, right? Or, like, well, you've so, got like, you've got family and responsibilities. Yeah, and... so I'll just kind of do it on the fly, and I just and here's the thing: when I show up, even like I may be at home, you know, going over some stuff, but like when I show up to play, I'm ready to play. Yeah, you know? like I'm I'm not burnt out. I haven't been grinding or whatever. Now sometimes it takes me a little while to get in the groove. You know, just because mm-hmm. maybe I hadn't played as much, but um, or hadn't played at that level. Um, so sometimes, like my game, like it, it may take a day or two. Or sometimes I like to play a satellite or do something before I get get ready to really go play. Oh, know? okay. So like, kind of like you need to get into flow. Yeah, I gotta so get into like, the first couple of hands or the first couple hours. It's a filling out process a little bit for me yeah. just because I don't play as much. But then once I get back in rhythm, okay, now I'm back. Yeah. You, know, now, you know, it's a rhythm. It's a fundamental that you kind of need to go and play with. And sometimes sometimes it's on, um, but I try to play at that level all the time, r- regardless of the tournament that I'm in. But I also only try to play things that is going to bring the best out of me. Right. Things that excite you. Yeah, I got to be excited to play. I got to want to, I have to want to do it. Like, yeah. if it's a tournament, I'm just kind of on the fence and not really feeling it. Yeah. That is <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. if you had to give, um, I mean, I'm sure that you you do this with your kids, I'm sure. But if there is one piece of advice, if your kids took nothing else away other than the do as you're told, other than that one. Yeah. A piece of advice that you would want them to remember in their toughest moments, what would it be? Um, hmm, that's a really good question. Um, I'd probably say to them, um, remain true to who you are. Um, don't feel a need to try to compromise if if you know it's not right inside, mm-hmm. you know, but also be willing to compromise if it's not, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, I, I, I don't know. I probably need a little more time on that. Evo. I know I threw, I threw it. At you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, was just... you know, I mean, I, I think it's really good, but like, you know, I, uh, I don't know. I just say, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just think in life you always want to uh, treat people the right way, 
um, you know, love hard, be respectful, um, caring, um, but also ferocious. Mm. If, if that all goes together. Yeah, right. of course it does. <laughs> See, there, there's your advice for your kids. Love hard, <laughs> be caring, but also ferocious. Yeah, no, that's, that's I fantastic like advice. It. Yeah, and and, and and if I had to say anything in poker, I think it's important to be fundamentally sound and disciplined. Mm. Yep. So if you could tell someone, if you could tell Richard five years ago playing the main event, what is the one piece of advice the one piece of like study habit or like the one takeaway that he absolutely needs, obviously he needs to work on fundamentals, mm -hmm. but what's the one thing that you would tell you five years ago with regard to poker? Um, patience, patience, patience. <laughs> probably, I, I'll probably go there. I'll probably say patience was, would be the number one thing for me at right. that time. I don't know, just because I felt like back then I didn't know like the the structure was so good. Like it's no need to try to push small edges. Da 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 da. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, so in poker, that's probably what I would say. Um, you know, and yeah, I, I, I'll say that. Patience. Well, I definitely got you to practice some patience today before we got on the stream today. You owe me. You owe me. <laughs> I owe you big time. I'm big coming place. to your 40th yeah, birthday. Right on you. And I'm, I'm bringing you all the wine. And uh, so let's see if we have any more questions before we close this out and I let you get back to the family. Let's yeah, see. Uh, oh, yeah, this is a fun one. Okay, can you ask Mr. Seymour his thoughts on the Raiders moving to Vegas? You get you get yeah. some of your best your favorite things. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, I think it's gonna be good for the NFL. I think um, you know, obviously, have it, it has its pitfalls just in terms of you know Vegas and everything mm -hmm. that it has to offer. But um, you know, once once you get past the distractions, I think it is. Uh, I think it's gonna be good for the league. I, and just think just think about this part. Like all of the road teams that's coming in to face the Raiders in Vegas, like all of those fans, like that's one one game everybody's going to circle. Hey, we're going to Vegas this weekend, rather it's Miami. All every, all of it, everybody in Miami is they come into Vegas, they're going to party that weekend and yeah. hang out. So I think I, I do think it's going to be important for the Raiders to have a strong fan base in terms of you know selling out the stadium and not giving too many of the away teams too much of a home field advantage right yeah, yeah i never i never really thought about it that way but that's a good point yep. but yeah that yep. that is definitely going to be the game that's like are you going i'm going yeah everybody, <laughs> yep absolutely i remember i was in vegas during the nba all-star weekend in vegas the first and last time they did that yeah <laughs> i know that's right and it was a <laughs> it was a shit show oh my god <laughs> It was crazy. So yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. All right, Richard. Well, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, absolutely. oh my god, um, this was um, this was so amazing. And I'm no, gonna see you in yeah. like five weeks. I know it. Five I or six it. weeks for the big four zero. Yeah, no. Thank you so much. <laughs> and like I said, thank you for having me. I enjoyed my time, and see you at the home game.